good. Good morning, Give Me 1100. Please join and stand with us singing praises to our Father. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You wrestle with a sinner's restless heart. Yes. You lead us by still waters into mercy. can keep us apart so church we love you god let's give him some praise hallelujah 
Yes, Father God. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. morning. And welcome. I greet you all in the name of the living and loving Lord. And for our call to worship this morning, I have a short reading from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the upright, in the congregation, great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. Amen. I go church. I want to be close, close to your side. Heaven is real, death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above, singing as one, hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am. God Almighty, great I am. I want to be near, near to your heart, loving the world, hating the dark. I want to see dry bones living again. Singing as one, hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee. At the mention of your name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell, or anyone can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am, the great I am. Of your name, King 
your majesty there is no power in hell or anyone can stand before the God is so good. Christ is my reward. All of my There's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy Through every trial my soul will sing No turning back, I've been set free Christ is enough for Decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me. Before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Sing that again, church. Christ 
Turning back, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Hallelujah. You be seated. And um, at this time, as I mentioned last week, we are sort of in the swing of things of getting our uh, new routine and, and bringing back some of our um, routine from before. So at this time, uh, we will be dismissing um, children who wish to go to Sunday school. So we have two classes, uh, the pre-K um, through K, which is being taught by Leah. Uh, there she can wave if anyone is new. <laughs> and then also uh, Shauna and Sierra are doing the grades one through four. Um, and so we'll just give them a moment to um, make their way out. <clears throat> and with all that being said, I will now welcome Brother Ronald to have our first reading for us. If you would stand to your feet for the reading of God's word, amen, from 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 3, and verses 7 through 15. And it reads, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and in high favor, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a, a leper. Now the Syrians on one of their raids had carried off a little girl from the land of Israel. And she worked in the service of Naaman's wife. She, was, she said to her mistress, would that my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, am I God to kill and to make alive that this man sends word to me to cure a man of leprosy? Only consider and see he is seeking a quarrel with me. The eighth verse says, but when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king saying, why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh will be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away saying, behold, I thought that he would wave his hand. They would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. Are not Abana and Pharpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the rivers of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. The 13th verse says, but his servants came near and said to him, my father, 
It is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will, not, will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times, dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of, according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. The, ninth, the 15th verse said, Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. And he came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. So accept now a present from my servant. Amen. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word, to the hearers of his word, and most of all, to the doers of his most holy word. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. This morning's gospel reading comes from the gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Here ends the reading. Congregation may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Over the past two and a half years, many of us had to experience isolation due to the pandemic. For those who tested positive for COVID, as I did about a year ago, or those who were traveling internationally and had to quarantine, isolation from family and friends became part of normal life. For some people, that isolation was incredibly difficult. They had to make special arrangements to have food delivered and prepared. They had no one to talk to, and it was a dull, lonely ordeal. For other folks, it wasn't too bad. The isolation could have been worse. I count myself in that category. Uh, long before I tested for COVID a year ago, I did have to quarantine in August of 2020. I had just deployed to Bahrain, and everyone entering the country, military or civilian, had to take a COVID test at the airport, quarantine for two weeks, and then test negative on another COVID test before being allowed to enter the general population. I was in a group of about 20 sailors and we were placed in a luxurious hotel with Wi-Fi, cable TV, and all the meals were provided for by room service. I would jokingly tell my family that I was doing hard time in solitary confinement, but obviously this wasn't the case. The worst thing about that quarantine, other than the boredom, was that my room overlooked a huge swimming pool. So during those two weeks, anytime I looked out the window, I saw families frolicking in the water or playing beach volleyball. Life is hard, right? <laughs> 
if that is the worst kind of isolation or shunning a person has to go through, it's not that bad. I can hardly imagine what it would have been like to be a person who suffered from leprosy. And just to give you a quick history, the disease of leprosy has been around for thousands of years. It causes skin lesions, eye problems, muscle weakness, the loss of feeling in fingers and toes and other forms of nerve damage. In ancient times, people did not know what caused the disease. So it was assumed that a person with leprosy was being punished by God for their sins. Because of fear that the disease might spread or that God's wrath might go further, People with leprosy were forced to leave their families and communities to live by themselves. In the Middle Ages, lepers had to live outside the city walls and to carry bells to warn others of their condition. They also used the bells to beg for alms, which was their only means of support. Following the instructions from Leviticus 13, lepers would shout the words, unclean, unclean so that no one would come near them. In the Middle Ages, they even had a special ceremony, a kind of mock funeral, in which a person with leprosy would be declared legally deceased and exiled from society. Even though the leper might live for another 10 to 15 years, he or she was considered dead to the world, never to see their family again. Over time, leper colonies were established to quarantine and treat those with the disease. But thankfully, in the mid 20th century, scientists found a way to cure and treat the disease. But the point is, we thought social distancing was bad. No wonder the 10 lepers in this morning's gospel story were so happy when Jesus healed them. Not only had they been healed of this terrible disease, but they had also been restored to their proper place in their community. They were able to rejoin their family. These 10 lepers, even though they had not died medically, experienced a resurrection to new life and new possibilities after years of nothing but shame, despair, and isolation. Before Jesus healed them, all they had were memories of their previous lives their days spent thinking back to what life had been like before their condition. But after meeting Christ, after encountering Jesus, they received a chance to start over. They were made clean and sent on their way rejoicing. And yet, only one of the 10 returned to thank Jesus, a Samaritan, one of the people that the good law-abiding Israelites did not care for, an outsider. Were not 10 cleansed? Where are the nine? Jesus asks, before saying to the Samaritan, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. I love this story. Very often this passage is read on Thanksgiving, perhaps to remind us how easy it is to take for granted the blessings that God has given us. As I reflected on this text over the past week, I found myself what ha wondering what happened to those other nine lepers. Did their leprosy return, <laughs> right? Did they praise God for the healing they had received? Or did they simply forget about what Jesus did for them as they began their new life? Jesus told the Samaritan, your faith has made you well, which makes me wonder how the other nine were healed. Obviously, it was Jesus who healed them, even though they failed to recognize that this was the case. Could it be that this story is telling us that God sends blessings and healing and new life to all kinds of people, even if they fail to see God's hand in their life? Have you ever noticed how different people can see the same event or share a common experience, but describe it in totally different terms? I once heard a story about the different ways that three stonemasons saw their job. 
Day in and day out, the three masons did the exact same work. The first one said, I work in the hot sun all day, throwing down bricks. The second mason said, I make $40 an hour. The third mason said, I build churches. When this building is done, people will come here and join together for worship, service, and fellowship. All three did the same thing, but all saw their jobs in entirely different ways. It's all a matter of perspective. Ten lepers were made clean. They were all given a new chance, but only the Samaritan fell down at Jesus' feet with praise and gratitude. The nine lepers probably had something good to say about Jesus, but only the Samaritan saw Jesus for who he is. The Word of God made flesh, the Redeemer of creation. Harold Kushner, a Jewish rabbi, once wrote a book called Who Needs God? And he said, religion is not primarily a set of beliefs, a collection of prayers or a series of rituals. Religion is first and foremost a way of seeing. It can't change the facts about the world we live in, but it can change the way we see those facts and that in itself can often make the difference. A Lutheran pastor named Brian Stoffergen noted that in this story from Luke's gospel, we find a typical pattern of God's activities throughout the Bible, namely that it's God who acts first. Then the proper response to God's actions is praise and thanksgiving, to see God's hand in what has happened. God did not tell the Israelites in Egypt, if only you had enough faith, I would, leave you to the, I would lead you to the promised land. God led them out of slavery to Canaan. God did not tell us, if you only had enough faith, I would send Jesus to suffer and die for your sins. It was because we had no faith that God sent us Jesus. As Paul writes in Romans 5, God proves his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God doesn't wait for us to have enough faith. God acts first. God's actions lead us to a faithful response. Of course, there is no shortage of opportunities to respond faithfully to all the good things God has done and is doing in the world. Our faithful response to God's grace can begin with seeing things differently. When some people look around at the world, the only things they see are coincidence, happenstance, or chance. But when people of faith look around, they see God's hands at work healing, nurturing, and guiding. Sometimes even people of faith can be like the nine lepers, so excited and joyful about what, got, what has happened that we fail to offer thanks and praise to God. We often take for granted the miracles God has done, even when God brings about something which once seemed impossible. The disease of leprosy, for example, which was once commonplace around the globe can now be cured. For thousands of years, no one thought this was possible. Leper colonies and policies of strict isolation are no longer needed to treat the disease. Back in the 1980s, there are about five million new cases of leprosy each year. Currently, there are less than 200,000 cases a year worldwide. People of faith look at this progress and can see how God has been hard at work using scientists, nurses, and doctors to eradicate a terrible disease. Now, it is unlikely that any of us gathered here this morning will ever know someone with leprosy. We will, however, each one of us, 
undoubtedly meet people who have been stigmatized for one reason or another. We all know people who have been labeled unclean by society and pushed to the margins, discarded or ignored. We will most likely never meet someone with leprosy, but I'm willing to bet that every day we come across individuals who do not know about Jesus and his love, who don't know about the transforming power of the God of Israel who can change death into life. Every day, we meet people who don't know that they are a beloved child of God. Who will it be that will share this good news with them? Could it be you? Amen. This time I'm going to invite Brother Ronald to come and lead us in a prayer. Before I pray, uh, this morning my wife, 42 years, a man, uh, she and my daughter was on the way from our home to Chicago, it's about 500 miles, to uh, be with a dear friend of the family whose mother had passed. As they were there in route, she received a phone call that their, sister, their, their son also had passed within the hour, so she is going to be with that family. And it, it's while I'm praying, just remember when you, those of you that know the word of prayer, uh, include uh, my wife and uh, friends in, in your prayer. If you would stand and we, I will go before God in prayer. All heads bow, all eyes closed. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace this morning, O oh Lord God. Thank you for our very own minister, a man that's brought forth your word, O oh God. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. Father, we lift up every family here on, on this morning, God, every family represented here far and near, God, every child, every man and woman, O oh Lord God. We lift them up to you, Lord God, that you uh, will continue to bless, O oh Lord God, like only you can. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and for your, all your many benefits, O oh Lord God, that extends to all generations. Father, we're praying that you would put a guard at our mouth that our speech may be seasoned with salt. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We are hiding in our hearts that we might not sin against you, Lord God. Help us, O oh Lord God, as we lay aside every weight, every sin, amen, that so easily beset us, O oh God. Father, we thank you for this beautiful edifice, O oh Lord God, we're yet worshiping in and praising in and lifting up Jesus in song, God. We thank you. We thank you for a glorious day that you've made. Help us, O oh Lord God, to walk towards you and not from you, Lord God. Help us to be the light of those that don't know you, Lord God. You've put a test on some of us, O oh Lord God. Some of us are living with roommates that may be a little unbearable, Lord God. But give us words of encouragement, God. Help us not to be judged. Judges, oh Lord God, but such were some of us, and we thank you, Lord God. Help us as we raise our children, God. Give us words of encouragement that we might not irritate them, God, but help us, oh Lord God, to stand in our perspective places, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. We, Father, we thank you as we continue to move about our way. Help us to know that it's in you that we live, move, and have our being. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Thank God. So be it. Amen. I'll leave you standing. We're getting to our good church aerobics today <laughs> of sitting and standing, and that's good. We've got to keep the quads nice and strong. Um, our announcements today, there's a few in the bulletin. I'll invite you to read at your leisure. As I mentioned earlier, we are continuing to have our Sunday school now, and uh, we're always looking for more volunteers to help out uh, to nurture and form the faith of our uh, young Christians. Um, we're having, uh, in the next couple weeks here, uh, we continue to have Bible study, um, also on Sunday morning. 
Um, so there are many opportunities. If you are interested in volunteering in any way, uh, please speak with me or one of the other worship leaders. Are there any other announcements for the good of the assembly or any other uh, prayer concerns of which someone would like to make us aware? Oh, the, and the offering, yes, thank you. Um, actually, in that case, the congregation may be seated. <laughs> and I'm gonna invite the ushers to come forward um, and to begin the offering. Thank you, Jeremy. Please rise and let us pray together. Uh, good and gracious God, you have blessed us with so many gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. We give back to you, O Lord, from the abundance that you have first given us. May the offering this morning go to where it is most needed. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be generous. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I invite the assembly to remain standing as we praise God with our final song. Amen, church. This next song talks about God's everlasting love. He's always there uh, from the inside out. Hallelujah. Thousand times I fail, since your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all things. will above all else my purpose remains the art of losing myself in bringing you praise is everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all I give you control Consume me from the inside out, Lord Let justice and praise Become my embrace To love you from the inside out Yes, Father God, we love you so much Thank you. Your will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise is everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes 
us beyond all things. Yeah, my heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul. Cries out. Yes. Everything we're going through, Father God, you have us. Everlasting. You'll always be there. Yeah. All right, we go, church. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all fame. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul. Shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul. Cries out from the inside out, Lord, my soul. Father God, we love you so much. Father God, we just ask that you be with us and we thank you for everything that you are going to help us with throughout the week, Father God, all of the challenges, Lord. Uh, we, we, sometimes we're just so incapable of doing something and that's when your strength is made perfect, Father God. We love you for that. Uh, and, and we continue to just give you praise, empower us throughout the week, spread your gospel, bring glory to you. We ask all these things in your name we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you, Getmo 1100. You are dismissed.